Yeah, hello, my name is Volker Schmitz. I'm sitting here and I'm happy uh, to meet Dr. Arthur Rakimov. And today we want to discuss cancer, cancer in relation to the famous breathing retraining of Dr. Buteyko. And uh, we also will maybe discuss some other topics which are closely related um, when it comes to, to cancer, which is diet, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. But let's start maybe with, uh, with the breathing retraining. So what is your opinion about the relation between cancer and breathing? Do people who have cancer generally uh, breathe wrong if there's something like this? Yeah, thank you first of all for introduction, Walter. Yeah. Uh, absolutely, if we start to measure, and there are studies I have tables, graphs, charts showing that people with cancer have uh, much heavier they breathe at least twice the norm. And when cancer starts to metastasize and people have even heavier breathing, we measure the CP, we do the CP test, body oxygen test, measuring breathing, we do this test, of course, additional methods can be used as well, and I use for my students, which indicate that people breathe too much with cancer, that causes cell hypoxia. So in medicine we call it hyperventilation, so people with cancer hyperventilate, this can be considered as a medical or physiological law now. Now, next thing, it's another physiological law when people breathe too much, too heavy, we are talking about autonomic or unconscious breathing, they get less oxygen. Now, hundreds... So it's permanent. It's permanent effect. They go, get chronic cell or tissue hypoxia, as mm -hmm. we call it in medicine. So, cell tissue hypoxia, according to dozens of studies, driving factor, some studies say cell hypoxia is a central factor which promotes multiplication of malignant cells. Mm -hmm. So growth of cancer tumors has direct correlation with the level of tissue hypoxia. So the less oxygen, the faster tumor grows. Yeah. Now, so the opposite technique, and some doctors knew it for a long time, they use hyperbaric or pure oxygen. They, when they put people on pure oxygen, the cancer tumor starts to shrink. So that's relation to cancer and oxygen. Knowing about that, Dr. Buteyka and 200 of his doctors noticed many decades ago that people when they practice breathing training because they had more than 100,000 of people with asthma, heart disease, other conditions, but many of these people of course have cancer tumors yes. and have breast cancer tumors, exceptionally common prostate cancer in men. But what we notice is that when doing breathing training program, when the students achieve really good levels up to 50-60 yes. seconds, and this is how they train it. In Russia, yeah, the cancer right. tumors disappear. So we, we discard tissue yeah. left, yeah. so the cell itself, the size of the tumor shrink to virtually nothing. And that was, of course, known among Buteyka doctors in Soviet Union in Russia. And because of that, one of the doctors, Dr. Paschenko, who was trained by Dr. Buteyka, mm -hmm. he worked in Ukraine, in Zaporozhye, he conducted a clinical trial on 120 people with mm -hmm. first early stages of metastatic breast cancer. Okay. And all these people, all these 120 women with breast cancer, like initial stages of metastasis, when cancer cells were started to spread to adjacent lymph nodes, sure. these people, all of them applied just three medical techniques, chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery. Mm -hmm. We will do surgery, we cut tumor, we will do chemotherapy and radiation. And then, in addition to that, half of people, so-called experimental yeah. group, mm -hmm. would use Buteyka breathing technique, breathing training, at the level of about two, two and a half hours a day of breathing exercises yes. for three years. Which is a lot of breathing exercises. Okay. So for three years they practice two, two and a half hours. And they also did physical exercises. We must be a whole program, it's program, it's it's a original program of breathing training. We started with about 10 yeah. seconds for the body oxygen test, for the CP test, which is very low, but uh, I've seen hundreds of such students because when people hyperventilate, and that's uh, 100% of people with cancer. We started with very low, those people who practice breathing exercises, three years later we measured mortality, how many of them died, mm -hmm. because mortality quite high. So the common mortality for this type of cancer, because cancer is very kind of, very different, types of cancer and di different stages of cancer, and so there are many variables. For this type of cancer, usually the mortality rate is somewhere around 25%. So three year mortality in three years, even though we do surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, all these medical methods, 
Be so, standard. Be, yeah, I think, yeah, 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 people often kind of, especially alternative medicine, they're kind of too, um, too maybe too critical in relation to these techniques. They saying that maybe we, we are totally useless and so on. There are many studies saying that they can reduce mortality by 10, 20 percent, just a little bit, 5, 10, 20 percent, sure. very common. So doctors apply this technique because we are statistically effective. Mm -hmm. We help people to survive longer and so on. Now, in addition to that, half of people, experimental group, practice this breathing exercise that I explained, and mortality in this group was six times less mm -hmm. than expected. Mm -hmm. So this control group had about 25% mortality. But in the experimental group, this doctor who trained them, breathing retraining, he actually wrote in the study that he lost only two women. Mm -hmm. So only two patients were lost uh, in his breathing retraining group. But these two women, he wrote had, in addition to cancer, we had, uh, we had diabetes and heart disease. So it was combined okay. condition that was much more complex, much more difficult. Sure. Not just cancer, breast cancer alone, but in addition with diabetes and heart disease. And because of that, he wrote that this, these uh, patients were not able even to retrain their breath. Mm -hmm. They started with CP around 10-12 seconds. They could not achieve even CP 20 seconds because of too much damage, too much inflammation, other abnormalities present in the body. Mm -hmm. So that was a clinical trial and it actually became, because of my studies in this area, and I had two patients, my, my students with cancer as well, and people who also recovered, people who would, were able to control cancer, to have normal life, to reduce the tumor size, to make tumor disappear. That became topic of my book, which I called Doctors Who Cure Cancer on Amazon, which I wrote like about three years ago, mm. because since then we had some new developments. Yeah. So new developments uh, relates to like something which started was started by Misha Sakharov, one of my one of my students. Uh, to include the, the idea was present before. Yes. To include it into breathing and retraining. Yeah. Because the diet was a part which can be exceptionally beneficial for people. So now we discussed already kind of how we can apply breathing to retraining and people with breathing to retraining alone can deal with cancer very successfully but of course it's a very hard problem because yeah. in order to improve, in order to achieve like clinical remission from cancer and have control of cancer, we need to practice really high amount of both free uh, breathing and physical exercise. can apply the take method, can apply devices for low DIY. And so when we achieve breathing retraining, the immune system, when we have enough oxygen, immune system is strong enough to start to deal with, to start to eliminate cancer cells naturally.